In this chapter, we'll continue working with audio recording and look at some of the more advanced features in Cubase. In this chapter, we're going to use Vary Audio to create a harmony vocal part, an introduction to multi-track drums, use Media Bay and Mini Media Bay to find additional material, and work with loops. We can use Vary Audio for more than just making corrections. We can use it to create additional harmony parts too. Let's use Andrew's harmony track as an example. First, we'll duplicate the entire track. Now, I'll cut the track and delete sections we won't need. Now let's open the sample editor for this portion. You can see the part has already been analyzed because of the segment shown in the sample editor window. Now let's experiment by dragging a few of these segments up and down to create an even thicker harmony part. Don't hide, my friend. Don't hide, my friend. You can use this same technique to create additional melodies or harmonies for any monophonic signal, such as a flute, violin, bass, or, of course, voice. Let's take a closer look at the drums and see how multi-track drums open up more options. First, we'll convert our MIDI drum track to multiple channels. Then we'll replace our MIDI drums entirely and use a live drummer. Let's double-click on the drum part and open the MIDI key editor. Here you can see that each drum sound is represented by a different key on our VST instrument. This is convenient when you're creating a drum part because you can work with all of the drums on one screen. But now that we have our drum patterns completed, let's move each drum sound into its own track. Open the MIDI menu, then select Dissolve Part. You have the option of separating your MIDI data by channel or by pitch. Since we have a different drum sound on each key or pitch, we'll select Separate Pitches. For this application, we don't want to use lanes because we want each drum sound in its own track for processing. Click OK. Cubase has now placed each note value on its own track. This means we have more tracks to deal with, but we have more flexibility too. For instance, we can now mix the level of each drum sound individually, like this. Or, we can apply EQ to individual drums without changing the overall sound of the kit, like this. We can even route individual drums through their own effects, like this. By dissolving the part into 10 separate instrument tracks, we've caused Cubase to create 10 separate instances of Groove Agent 1. That certainly gives us a lot of flexibility, but it also uses more CPU power. 
Later, we'll look at how to use a VST instrument rack to reduce CPU load in this situation. In our final chapters, we'll take this concept one step further and actually swap out the MIDI drums for an audio recording of a live drummer. Now, let's change musical styles and look at how to produce loop-based electronic music. Let's start a new project. Much of today's music, dance music in particular, is created with loops. Audio loops are pre-recorded segments of audio that can be placed in sequence to form a track. We'll also show you how to make these pre-recorded loops match the tempo of your project. The first thing that we need to do is locate all of our available loops. That's a big job, but fortunately we have a powerful tool to help us, MediaBay. MediaBay is the control center for all of your sounds, presets, loops, and patches in Cubase. You open MediaBay under the Media drop-down menu or by pressing F5. Use the Window Layout tool to open all of MediaBay's panes. This is a lot of information, but MediaBay is very easy to use. The Define Locations pane is used to configure MediaBay and tell it where to find the media files on your hard drive. If we expand the VST sound file, you can see most of the Steinberg factory content is here. The color of the check marks and the folder icons tell you what files have been scanned and which have not. The color coding is explained in the operations manual. Let's close the Define Locations pane for now. On the other side of Media Bay, you'll see the Attribute Inspector pane. The Attribute Inspector allows you to categorize your media, also known as tagging, to make it easier to find and to filter. The Attribute Inspector is a powerful organization tool. It's also explained in detail in the Operations Manual. Let's close the Attribute Inspector pane for now. The remaining four panes are used to locate and select media. The Locations pane tells Media Bay where to look. We'll set this to VST Sound. The Filters pane lets you search for media by attribute or by typing in logical criteria. This is the same system we used to find track presets in an earlier chapter. The Results pane shows you the results of your search. You can use the Select Media box to limit your results to certain types of files. Since we're only looking for audio loops, let's change this setting from All Media Types to Audio Files. You can click on this gear icon to customize the column headings. And these triple arrow buttons reset your filters. This box shows you the total number of results. The last pane is the Previewer. After you select a result, the Previewer lets you listen to it. The Previewer also has tools to synchronize the preview and your project so you can hear the selection in context. Since we're only interested in loops, we have the option of using a specialized version of MediaBay called the Loop Browser. Loop Browser is also found under the Media menu. You can see that it looks almost identical to MediaBay. The only difference is that Loop Browser is pre-configured to look for loops so you don't have to adjust as many filter settings. A new feature introduced in Cubase 6 is the Mini Media Bay. Let's use the Mini Media Bay in the Logical Filter mode to find a bass loop called Thumb Funk 1 Basic. We'll set Name, Matches, Thumb Funk. Now we can see the number of results is 9, and here's the loop we want. Let's use the previewer to listen to it. Now I'll double click the loop to bring it into the project at the beginning of the song. Now let's repeat this process to find a suitable drum loop and a vocal loop. Now that we have a few loops loaded up, let's look at what we can do with them. 
I'm going to concentrate on the drums first. The first thing I want to do is reduce the project tempo. If we place the drum loop into musical mode, it will automatically slow down without changing pitch. You toggle between musical mode and linear mode by clicking here. The yellow note icon means musical mode is turned on. Now, I'll click on Tempo in the transport panel and switch to Fixed. Now let's play the loop and hear what it sounds like. Okay, that sounds better. The next thing we need to do is copy this loop to lengthen our drum track. There are several ways to do this. You can select the audio event and press Command or Control and D for duplicate. This will make a copy and automatically paste it into position after the original. You can select the audio event and then open the Edit menu and select Copy. Then, select the track where you want to paste the copy, position the cursor, select Edit again, and then Paste. You can speed up the copy and paste process with the shortcut keys, Command or Control, C, and then V. You also have the option to select the audio event, hover over the right-hand corner sizing handle, and hold down the Option key on your keyboard. The pointer will change to a pencil tool. Now you can click and drag it to the right. When you let go, Cubase will put copies of the audio event into the audio part automatically. Let's build this part out to measure 25 or so. OK, let's work on that bass part. First. I'll duplicate it enough times to match the drums. But to keep it from becoming too monotonous, let's transpose the third pattern and the fifth pattern. I'm going to hold down the Command key and click on them to select them both at once. Then, under the Audio menu, I'll select Process, and Pitch Shift. I'll set this to transpose the pitch up five semitones, or a perfect fourth. I'm also going to change the algorithm to polycomplex. This algorithm takes the longest to compute, but it will provide a high quality result. When you click Process, Cubase will ask your permission to create a new version of the waveform. It has to do this since your copies all refer back to the same original sample on the hard drive. OK, let's hear how that sounds. Terrific! Let's go ahead and transpose pattern 4 up just a bit further. We'll use 7 semitones, or a perfect fifth, to add some variety. Now let's bring in that vocal loop. If I open the pool, I can see all of the audio events used in this project. Notice that one column of information gives the musical key for the event. You can see that the original bass loop was in the key of E. You can see that there are multiple copies of it because of the new versions we created. Unfortunately, there's no way for the loop to know what's been transposed, so all versions will still say key of E. Notice that the vocal loop is in the key of D. This means to get the vocal loop to work with the bass loop, the vocals will need to be pitch shifted or transposed up two semitones from D to E. Now, let's hear how that sounds. Cool. 
cool. You can find great sounding loops for almost any style of music at the Steinberg online shop. The SQL content sets will work seamlessly with Cubase. The content sets will automatically install the VST sound folder. You can then use the Define Locations function in Media Bay to navigate these loops quickly. Let's move on to Chapter 8, where we'll explore how to use the new Node Expression system and several other new features found in Cubase 6.